WEMF. Presented by the Sound Museum Boston. Young Jerks. We're getting right into it. That's right. We got a Ready to show go. Today. Oh, yeah, man. We I'm very excited about the show today. Very, very yeah. excited. I mean, we have a lot announced and some things unannounced, too. Just things happening at uh, WEMF Radio right now. If you've been listening, you already heard that Will Daly was here today, prof- uh, they, you know, talking to Ryan Spaulding. Great show, too. The Outlaw Road Show came on before us. Love him. Yes. And if you've been listening all along, you've heard a lot of his new music, and he's still here. There he is. Wow. <laughs> Kid, is that microphone working? Is Will's microphone on? Yeah. Yes. I think we got there it. It is awesome. Um, yeah, I saw you. I couldn't leave. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. This, is, this is how I get on radio. I just like hang out and like sleep in the station. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, this is like how I've done everything. It's like I just camp out and like wait for someone to talk to me. You know. Well, this is That's the place it. for it. I mean, I'm. Uh, <laughs> you, you, I mean, I love your music. I, and I, I know that you know that, but no, we've always had the best back and forth, and you've all no, you've always given me that keep yeah. going vibe. You know, which has been immense. So thank you. Thank you. I, I love uh, that. Uh, congratulations on the new album. Thank you. Uh, it's amazing, and it's doing really well. It's yeah. you're independent now. You got away from yeah. CBS Records, and well, this is Universal that I fought to get off of. Yeah, I was sold. I was sold like to a awful trader. <laughs> you know, I don't want to use the word slave, but like a trader just in uh, stock trading. You know, I was in a company that made used art to keep the stocks high yes and i realized this is not a good place to belong and i can't make something that is used to keep a wealthy person wealthy yeah and uh they're asking for new material and i said if i give you this material you can do the same thing you did with the old material and um so i said look i'll keep spending your money or you can let me go and i'll save all your money it was a five record deal I had done one record, and uh, they let me go. And I made the record uh, with my fans. I mean, 750 fans bought the record ahead of time, before they even heard a note. Huh. And that's how I paid for it. And here's the funny thing. In my whole career, 10 years, you know, it's the first record I ever made that the day it came out for me, I wasn't in the red, because everyone had bought it ahead of time. All these people decided that this art should exist, and so I was able to do it. I'll never go back. And anyone who says to me, oh, the crowdsourcing thing, it's bogus. Well, what did you like before? Yeah. What about what about democracy did you like? That's a democracy process in action. Awesome. What did you not like before? You know? So uh, that's my story. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, there's a lot more to your story, too. I've been you know, following. I mean, one of the things I want to thank you, we, you know, we have a big guest waiting on the phone. And we just want to make sure everyone knows that we are going to have our big guest, Evan Falchuk, running for governor. He's actually listening to this right now. He's on the phone. We're going to introduce him in a second. But before we do, we still have Will Daly here. And before we let him go, and we, we, we want to have you back on the show. Definitely, Will. You're uh, someone that's been political, um, done things for great causes, um, one of the things I love on uh, Bay State Rock with Carmelita, yeah, uh, something for a long time I was on her about was the, the CD situation with the plastic. Right. And I heard you say the same exact thing. And when Will Daly said it, all of a sudden she started taking the MP3s. And, and we, we see less CDs around my household. So, I mean, yeah. little things like that. I mean, <laughs> Mike's own personal savior. You're, you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you are like, you're an amazing person That's on so, so many you, levels. Brother. So, well, yeah, I think you're amazing. And we've had so, we've had so many good interactions over the years. It's really been an inspiration for me. And, uh, so, uh, thank you for thank saying you. that. And uh, w- uh, before we let you go, again, one more. I keep saying this, but uh, what do you think about this election for governor? Because we're about to have um, Evan Falchuk on the phone mm-hmm. here. He's running for governor. Who, who, where are you leaning? What do you I'm think? I'm not going to lie. I don't know. Evan, I don't know much about it. I've been on the road. I've been working uh, on my record. And here's, here's my thing. I believe you can vote more with your dollar than you can do in the ballot box. And until that changes, until someone comes in the office and changes that, that's when my attention is grabbed. Um, and I'll do respect to anyone running for office, and I've, I vote all the time. It's not that. But I do pay attention to what I buy. I do pay attention to where I spend my money, on what art I spend my money on, on where I'm putting my art in the parking meter, 
what bar I'm spending on, what restaurant, where they're getting the f- restaurants getting their food. It's not easy, and I fail at it all the time, and that's okay if I do. That's okay if we all do. But how we spend our dollar is is immensely powerful. So that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Will Daly. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> awesome man. That's and now uh, we, we hopefully will be playing some more new Will Daly. Uh, even if it's the same music from Ryan's show, we want to hear some more Will Daly today. Um, but as we are the Young Jerks, we're going to switch over now, and we're going to get into it. Yeah. Who are we going to get into it with? We're going to get into it with Evan Falchuk, who is independent uh, candidate running for governor. And we're very excited to have her on. Hello, Evan. Are you there? I am here. Hi. Thanks for, thanks for having me, guys. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. So, Evan, uh, we're very excited to have you. I am. I'm so excited to have you on the show right now. I'm watching your campaign. It seems like it's going very well in a lot of respects, especially in social media. You're blowing up. You're blowing up, but at the same time, you just get excluded from these debates. You're all of a sudden at uh, polling over 5% within the margin error of, of close to 10 that they want you at for this debate, but you've been excluded. Yeah, it's interesting how that's worked. You know, we've done um, two televised debates. One was in Springfield and, and one was in Boston. And uh, the, the Boston one was on WBZ for anyone who got a chance to see it, but people should go watch it because you'll see that what, what I've what I did in, in both of those debates were uh, was what I've been doing the whole campaign was just speaking the truth about what's going on in our politics and the way that our democracy is being eroded away. And in between those debates, I got a call. Let, let me let me go back in time a little bit. August twenty eighth, I got a letter from NECN and the Worcester Telegram and Gazette and the Worcester Chamber of Commerce. A very nice letter that said, "Please come to our debate." Uh, in at, in the end of October, October 27th, it'll be on television. It'll be a great opportunity for you to be seen in Central Massachusetts. Which, by the way, we just opened our Worcester office today. It was an exciting uh, day for us to have Worcester at a big clergy uh, breakfast with uh, about 150 community leaders and and clergy. It was really inspirational. Um, so, was, so this um, in between these two debates, I get a call from a woman named Mary Plansky over at NECN, who I've never heard of before, Boo. who called me and, and said. <laughs> We are we're, we have to rescind the invitation to the debate, and she wouldn't give us a, a straight answer as to why um, or who decided or what it was about, except to say it was an editorial decision. And then finally, after we pressed her, she said, "Well, you're not high enough in the polls to be included in a debate." And I said, "That's interesting because I was lower in the polls when you made the invitation to me. So what happened?" And, again, no straight answer. And that's where she said, well, I think you need to be somewhere around 10%. And I said, well, so if I'm at 10%, am I going to be in this debate? She said, well, we'd have to reconsider at that point, maybe. So this is what's going on. When you when you have a candidate that's out there challenging the establishment, that's speaking the truth about the high cost of living in our state, what's causing it. Uh, if you saw the debate, you saw me point out that, that Charlie Baker and Martha Coakley are two sides of the same coin on this problem of, of health care costs. Um and then you see that I get disinvited. It, it should be a wake-up call to everybody who cares about our democracy to say, why should independent voices be stifled? Why why can't candidates who claim that they want to bring uh, their brand of leadership to the state be forced to defend themselves? For I'm sure. legally on the ballot just like them. You know, I, I had to get 10,000 signatures to get on the ballot. I got 17,000. Uh, we've got a couple dozen almost full-time staff. I've got hundreds of volunteers and, and supporters everywhere. I mean, that's 5% is a big number. Um, why should our voices not be heard? And, and that's that's what we've been calling on people to do. If they go to the Falchuk2014.org website, they can see our petition, and they can see the contact information of the people who did this. Yeah, especially especially when you're rising in the polls. Absolutely. It's not an easy thing to do as a third-party candidate. You're spending a lot of money. Um, you could see it in the social media right now. People are, yep. are responding to your campaign. A lot of people, a lot of my friends, and then a lot of people I don't know, I follow this, and you're exploding on this, and a lot of it is that debate. You know, it's like Jesse Ventura won with that third party in Minnesota as governor. Same thing. Yep. He, he was polling nothing, but he got in the debates, and then he was able to poll higher. This is this is what they're trying to stop, is I this know. kind of thing. And it's it wouldn't be happening if we were, if we were unimportant. And so on one level, it, it, it's, it's motivating because it says, you know what, we're making a difference. If they, if, if they didn't care, they would, they, would, they would be perfectly happy having me in the debate. But to, to uninvite, disinvite, 
you know, that that's a pretty strong step to take. So we've been, we've gotten uh, over the last week since this happened, thousands of people signing our petition. I've signed it. Online. At, 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 yep, yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. One of the 10,000. Uh, There's over 10,000. It's a huge number, and the phone calls and emails, and I can only imagine how many calls and, and emails and letters the people from those news organizations are getting. Cause this isn't this isn't democracy. No. This, is, this is something else. Why should she and, decide? Um, Why should she decide? It's so ridiculous. This needs to go. This needs to end. I mean, you need to be in these debates. Um, I'm, I'm going to be calling my cable provider and asking them to get rid of New England Cable News if you're not in that debate. That's the end of it. And yeah. I think everyone should contact them, the Worcester Gazette and Telegram, Telegram and Gazette, yep. New England Cable News. Uh, sign and the Worcester petition. Chamber of Commerce, too. We and what yeah. about Coakley and Baker? I mean, you, yeah. you asked yep. Coakley and Baker. Why should she decide? It's so ridiculous. This needs to go. This needs to end. I mean, you need to be in these debates. Um, I'm, I'm going to be calling my cable provider and asking them to get rid of New England Cable News if you're not in that debate. That's the end of it. And yeah. I think everyone should contact them, the Worcester Gazette and Telegram, Telegram and Gazette, yep. New England Cable News. Uh, sign and the, the petition. Chamber of Commerce, too. We and what about Coakley and Baker? I mean, you, yeah. you ask yep. Coakley and Baker, you know, to say something and say, hey, listen, you know, if you really care about the voters of the Commonwealth, let them hear the whole story and ask them to support putting you back into the debate. Yeah. What, yeah, what have they them. done about that? You asked Are they them, names on what, the, your what did petition? They say? Did they say anything no. privately at, during, you know, after that no. debate? You had, nothing. They no. I, I asked them, and in, in that debate, I asked both of them because and this is the thing that I think was most interesting. Martha Coakley, uh, right after the primary, said she wanted there to be six debates that would include all the candidates for governor. That's what she said. She said she wanted them to be in different parts of the state on different issues, and there should be six, and they should include everybody. Well, um, we've had two. That include everybody. Um, the third one was going to be the Worcester one, and she's not taking a stand to to back up her own promise. Her own pledge was to do this. And when I, you know, asked about that in the in the debate, she said, "Well, we could ask the organizers, but we don't control what they do." Well, that's not leadership. I mean, it's certainly not leadership to bail on on a promise you made, and it's definitely not leadership to say you're you're too powerless to to go up against these news organizations, how's it going to be when you have to deal with the big hospital systems? How's it going to be if, God forbid, something bad happens and there's a crisis? We can't have a governor, whether it's whether it's Baker, Coakley, or me, uh, who says, well, you know, there's nothing I can do. I'm powerless to act. Because they're not. You know, if they, if they cared, they could tell NECN and they could tell the Worcester Telegram and Gazette, we're not going to come if you don't if you don't do it the way that you originally did it. Absolutely. Absolutely, because yeah, you, 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 you I mean, people. yeah, I mean, the whole thing about this is you're the like you point out over and over again with the health care issue. We saw this with the uh, with the you know the uh, all the about the militarization of the police. We saw this with the medical yep. marijuana. We saw this in the debate that you showed on all these issues that the emperor wears no clothes. That they're you're yep. the one who challenged them in that debate. There was five people there. You were the one who was actually leading the both of those debates by far giving the actual answers and, and questioning right. those candidates and showing them those major two parties up. Yeah. And no one, they don't want to see that. You know, and it's, it, it was, I was trying to explain to my son who's 11 uh, and he's a big, he's a big baseball fan and he's trying to understand how this is possible. He, and he said, this is kind of like if your team makes the playoffs and then the, the league says you can't play because we don't like your team. You know, it's, it's, if an 11 year old kid can understand that, um, then we, we definitely should drop the voting age by a lot. <laughs> yeah, why not? Or, you know, and, and it's and it's it's just it's appalling. Now, some of the stuff that's happened behind the scenes is interesting because there's a number of other things that aren't debates, but there are forums. Uh, there was one that was going to be in, um, well, we hadn't settled on a location, but it was going to be about the gateway cities, which are you know the older old industrial cities like Springfield and Lowell and Worcester and New Bedford and Brockton and, and places like this, and there was going to be a forum about this sponsored by Commonwealth Magazine, sponsored by the Patriot Ledger newspaper, the Brockton uh, Enterprise, and um, and there was a couple other partners. And that was supposed to happen, and the Baker and, and Coakley camps um, bailed on it last week, as well as a forum that was going to take place at Stonehill College in Easton, Massachusetts. Stonehill's done forums for, for all these different things, including the primaries. I've spoken at Stonehill, and they bailed on it as well. Um, what we're seeing with this is a pattern. And um, there was an article recently in, in USA Today, an editorial, talking about how in many races around the country, they're having no debates among the candidates. And uh, I think that the, the Baker and Coakley 
uh, teams, the political establishment, have decided that, you know, we, we made a mistake in allowing for debates because when they happen, it puts us in uncomfortable positions. We want to have a debate that makes people not vote because it ends up being either boring or um, inane arguing about issues that voters aren't interested in. And and this is this is our democracy. This is really at risk when when political leaders get away with this stuff. So what what I think is the most important thing that anybody can do is to see this happening because it's happening right in front of us, right here in Massachusetts, and take action. It isn't just call and email, and people should do that to make sure your voice is heard, so the people at those media outlets know that this won't stand. But it's to make sure that you vote on November fourth. And, and understand that your vote is so much more powerful uh, than, than you realize. There's a reason they want to keep people away from the ballot box. You know, we had a, um, a primary where only 16% of voters voted, 16%. And, and why did it happen? It's because they, they ran campaigns that were, that they were focused on keeping people away from the ballot box. They didn't want people voting. So, Evan, so with, with you know, you mentioned the, the ballot box, right? So in Massachusetts, we've gone to the ballot box and... You know, we don't always get what we want when we vote for it, right, in terms of this medical marijuana legislation that we have going yep. right now, you know? And so we have a situation where we voted for it, and the state has completely, you know, sat idle, sat on their hands, or obfuscated the process of it actually happening. So I, yep. you were invited, right, to a to a action that's going to be happening in front of the DPH in order to uh, send a message that patients need access to medicine now, right? And yep. that, that yep. would be October the 14th. Do you, do you support that? Do you plan on attending that? That if, I, I don't think I'm able to be there, but I support it. And and, uh, and uh, there's a there's a number of reasons for this. One of them is forget for a second that it's about medical marijuana because that can make it confusing for most voters. If if you hear about the fact that the state passed a law, the ballot initiative, saying that this kind of um, medicine should be available to patients, and two years later it still isn't implemented, you'd be appalled. Now, the fact that it's marijuana makes it so that people, because there's a, we, there's this odd um, stigma attached to it, it makes it so that people get very scared about how to handle it. And you'll hear people that are in this race always give half answers on anything to do with medical marijuana. Um, but it's it's the law. It's the law. And we need to be able to deal with that reality. Uh, and it's, it's incredible to me because there's a few other examples of this. One of them, we just had a forum about people that do human human services workers. So these are people that are working with people that have disabilities, veterans, seniors. And there was a law passed by the state also back in 2010 requiring that they get a pay raise, and the state still hasn't implemented it. And these are workers making on average about $12 an hour. So it isn't just medical marijuana that gets treated this way. Absolutely. It seems like for some, It seems like for some people the law is optional. Um, and that for for the people that are in our politics, if the, major, if the overwhelming majority of voters said that there should be medical marijuana available to patients, and there are patients who need it, and the state doesn't implement it, the only uh, recourse we have is to vote in new people. Yeah. And it's it's why I founded the United Independent Party, because i got to tell you, the people that are doing this stuff now, um, they're not going to wake up one day and suddenly say, you know, I think what we're going to do is start implementing laws that have been passed. <laughs> well, I know that's exactly it because you know we're, we're there's a protest on Tuesday and they're starting a DPH and going to the governor's office. They've been there before. Mm -hmm. There's two local moms that we're all watching right now, Evan. I have to tell you about this. Um, yep. They have young children, young girls, um, two moms, and the kids. We watched them have seizures. Frank went and saw this woman's kid having seizures over and over again. Um, the girl's been developmentally delayed, and apparently there's a strain of marijuana that's 20 to 1, the ratio to CBD to THC. It's not the stuff that people like us like to smoke. It's not the stuff that gets you high. It's the other stuff. It's this, this rare strain that's only for certain patients, for these kids. And they can't get it because the DPH restricted the caregivers. They got rid of the whole program. They're saying wait for dispensaries. Who knows how long? Wait for the system to Just get Just be set patient. Up. Yeah, be patient. Wrong. And the kids Terrible. having seizures. Like, if you were governor, would you help these two moms? Would you help these two kids get that medicine? Would you help bring yeah. back caregivers' service to them? I, I, I would, and it's both because it's the right thing to do, but also because it's the law. It's the law. You know, we, we passed the law. We had this discussion. You know, the, the law was passed, and the, the obligation of our people in government is to implement the law. And when when we live in a in a in a in a time in our country where the law is apparently optional. Um, it's very worrisome. And now think about this. 16% voted in the primary. 
the Charlie Baker and Martha Coakley are counting on very low turnout in the general election so they can get into office. I don't have any confidence either one of them is going to go and do something to deal with this issue that we're talking about. Um, they, when they've been asked about this issue, they get very uncomfortable um, and don't really have much to say about it other than, you know, the process has been bad and we should look at ways to do it better. And I'm sure they would say things like be patient. But I, I don't know how you can look at a patient uh, in, in the eyes who's suffering with something that could be helped by something that has been made legal and say to them, you can't have it because we just haven't been able to figure out how to how to make it available. And that's a, just, a that's child, just nonetheless. Right. A child, you yeah. know, not even not even a, a full-bodied, abled adult. A, a child, they do that to. Yeah, that's it's just, terrible. Yeah, that's having the whole life developmentally delayed. The child terrible. isn't even able to be, isn't able to grow, isn't able to progress mentally or physically because... They're having seizures over and over again. It's, it's it's terrible. It's just terrible. I mean, it's heartbreaking when you listen to those stories. And I've, I've read um, things you've been writing about about that, and and I, and just the process of how this whole thing is playing out is is a reflection of a political establishment that just doesn't take people very seriously. And you know the the anger and the frustration that people feel. Um, when they see that a candidate's disinvited from a debate, they they got to channel that on November fourth and vote. You know, they're, they're, the deadline to register to vote is October 15th. So if you haven't registered already, people got to get out there and go down to your town clerk and register. You know, if you're a student and you live here, if you've got a lease, you've got something that shows you live in Massachusetts, take that down there, get yourself registered to vote. Don't let these kinds of things continue because the people in power are very comfortable. Not, they don't seem interested in, in what you think. And uh, that can change at the ballot box. And that's where it will change. I agree. I, I, you know, my number one, I gave a speech at this uh, rally this year for marijuana legalization and, and medical. And I said the number one thing you can do is get registered to vote if you're not and, and vote for Evan Felchuk. That's I really, true. I, I was believe, there. I was there. <laughs> I really do believe that. Like that, that's yep. what people need to do right now if they want this to pro- progress right now. Yep. That's what you can do. And um, thank you for some reminding people if you're not registered, get registered right now, or this week, like Monday, Tuesday. Like now. Yeah. Like go, go online Monday and register morning. to vote. Yeah. WEMF.